Cape buffalo are one of the big five, one of the big five dangerous game animals in Africa. And rightfully so, these are ornery critters. They would just as soon spit on you as look at you. These are tough, tough animals, and there's a reason people really gun up when they're going to hunt Cape buffalo. You want to put them down and keep them down, because if you don't, they're coming for you. What is it about these African giants that attracts so many hunters to the dark continent? I know people become almost addicted to hunting these animals, and I think I finally understand why. You are going into the unknown. What's on the other side may know you're coming. I just did 20 hours on an airplane to get here to South Africa. You think I want to kill a buffalo? You better believe it. I put in my time already. I'm ready to get out in the field and get it done. Part of hunting Africa is not just the hunting. It's being in this magical place. Everyone dreams about coming here, but many don't realize what an incredible place it is. It's a game-rich environment that offers hunting at its most primal roots. You just better have enough gun for the job. I think every hunter owes it to himself to experience Africa. It is a long journey, flying to Johannesburg, then hopping another plane north. From the town of Polokwane, it's a three-hour ride through communities and countryside that scream being in South Africa, finally leading to the Maroi Conservancy near the Zimbabwe border. My wingman on my Cape Buffalo hunt was a good friend of mine, Ken Jorgensen. Uh, Ken and I have hunted together before. We've hunted upland birds, but we're going to take it up a notch this time. Uh, we're going to Africa to hunt Cape buffalo. And it's just great to be able to share an epic hunt like this with a good friend. And for me, Ken was that guy. It's the National Geographic that I read growing up in the 50s. I mean, it's the things that I never thought I'd get to see. It is an absolute gorgeous morning here in South Africa. And what's gonna make it so much sweeter, we're going after buffalo. Well, being the buddy he is, Ken let me go first. Uh, so I was up to bat. We're gonna get up onto high ground, scout the area, and then, and then if, if we see a good buffalo from up there, we, we stalk it from there. We had a lot of rain this year and the, and, the, and the bush is very, very thick and green and lush. Um, so finding the buffalo, um, I knew was going to be very, very difficult from the foot. Um, I decided to take us up onto, this, onto the copy so we can get a, a bit of an elevation and maybe see if we can, can spot something from up there. Um, it was a beautiful morning. It was warming up quickly. We just sat up there and did a lot of glassing. It probably wasn't even an hour. We were up there maybe an hour and we saw some buffalo coming through the bush. And I mean, talk about getting your heart pumping to finally see your first Cape buffalo. Uh, but the brush is really thick here. They've had a lot of rain. I got one good look at him. He's definitely a great bull and Ben gave me the green light. But the only angle I had was a walking away angle. I was at a steep elevation, animal walking just about directly away from me. I just wasn't comfortable with the shot. So I let him walk off. Uh, ben was pretty confident that we could get down off the kopi and put a stock on him. Uh, Terry Bone is out front trying to stay on the track. We got our eyes peeled in every direction just looking for buffalo. I mean, you don't know where they're going to come from. They are a dangerous animal, and you don't know if they're going to run away from you or if they're going to run toward you. So we're working our way through the bush, and all of a sudden, Ben just stops us in our tracks. And we all drop down, and we're just trying to see anything through this brush. And I can see black just moving along, moving along. You know, I felt the wind hit the back of my neck, and I knew the gig was up. And all of a sudden, all I could hear was just 
thumping hooves going through the bush. And it was really exciting just to hear all these animals uh, galloping away. And we got busted, I mean, it happens. But it was great that Ben and our tracker, Terry Bona, they just laughed it off. They said, no big deal, we'll go find another buffalo. There is a next buffalo for Gordy, but can he get a shot with his 375? Then coming up, figuring out your natural point of aim. This is Modern Shooter. Modern Shooter is brought to you by Colt. Built one at a time, proven every round. And by Aguila Ammunition. Feed your firearm by H&H &H Precision Rifles for shooters who demand performance. By Killer Innovations on the cutting edge of design for the firearms and archery industry. And by Mega Arms, taking precision to the next level. What makes a legacy? Is it quality? Craftsmanship? Maybe it's the idea that every American deserves their right to security and peace of mind on and off the battlefield. What makes a legacy? Here at Colt, we're making it every day. Colt, built one at a time, proven every round. It's been said that Cape Buffalo look at you like you owe them money. And you know, it's basically true. Uh, these are 2,000 pound pit bulls. They've got an attitude that's unmatched. And that's why they're one of Africa's most dangerous game animals. They're one of the big five. And you know, when you go to Africa to hunt dangerous game, the equipment you bring should reflect the danger in, in hunting these animals. I'm going to start with the rifle. Um, you want a rifle that's rugged and dependable. Uh, for me, uh, the quintessential dangerous game rifle is a bolt action. I mean, they're very dependable and you have lots of firepower. You have three cartridges in the belly and one in the barrel. That means you've got four shots should something go horribly wrong. So I'm thinking bolt action rifle. Um, usually, the 375 H&H or 375 Ruger is considered the minimum uh, for an animal such as a Cape Buffalo. Um, I guess my rule of thumb is that go with the largest caliber that you're comfortable shooting, whether it is a 375, 416, or even one of the larger Magnums. Now for me, I'm about 160 pounds uh, soaking wet. I want a gun that's not going to beat me up too bad. I'm not that uh, sensitive to recoil, but I want to be able to get back on the shot as quickly as possible. That's why uh, when I went to Africa, I took a, a 375. I found that the, the recoil was very manageable. Um, I didn't lose the sight picture too horribly. I could get back on target very quickly um, with, the, with the 375. So we're back to tracking again, and we do get on some fresh tracks right away. Um, right back in that same thick crap we were in before though. So we're moving along, you know, trying to stay on the track, trying to catch up to the buffalo again. Uh, fortunately though, we started working our way into some more open areas. Not real open, but we had shooting lanes here, shooting lanes there, we could see maybe 50 yards. 75 yards. So now I was hopeful that if we could either get ahead of the buffalo or just come up behind them, we might finally get a close up look at a buffalo and a clear shot. And bingo, what do you know? We come into this clearing. I mean, we just step into the clearing and I look up and I see this big black buffalo pouring away from me. He was totally unaware that we were there. And I'm talking, he was only about 60 yards away. Problem is, I don't have a shot. I get down on the sticks, but I don't have a shot. There's a little bit of brush obscuring his vitals. Now he's starting to walk at an angle away from me. And I'm thinking, you know, he's gonna walk right out of my life if he keeps doing that. 
and we're going to have to start all over again, circle on him again. Fortunately, when he moved into the, into the clearing, into an open area, he turned broadside for me. And I saw him buckle really hard. I jacked another shell in, but he was gone just like that. But I felt really confident that I'd put the bullet where I needed to. But with buffalo, you never know. These are tough, tough, tough animals. You can get bullets in them, and they'll run and run, and they become very dangerous at that point. OK, so now Ben and I are in full alert mode. I mean, you got to be very cautious when you're walking up on these animals. So we walked up. And he always put another insurance shot in, uh, but he was dead. One shot kill. I felt really good about that. Beautiful. Ah! Please, look from the 40, 41 in front. Oh, man. <laughs> Beautiful bus. Ah. Okay, look at this. It's an old, old, very mature bullets all together, yeah? Oh, man. And it's done its job. You can see it's a beautiful, beautiful animal. Great shot, man. man. I couldn't believe how fast uh, that happened. I know, it's just all of a sudden there. Um, and this thick brush, you know, if you catch one of these in the open right now, from what I've seen so far, it's really a gift just to catch a lone bull in the open like that. This just felt like the perfect gun for this. And it's the first time I never felt the kick. <laughs> yeah, it's funny how that works. Isn't it? Yeah, it really is. This animal, there's something special about Cape Buffalo. And I know people become almost addicted to hunting these animals, and I think I finally understand why. Gordy got his, now it's my turn. Coming up, the search is on for another buffalo, but deep in this African river bottom, who is hunting who? But up next, we head to the range to get the most comfortable position to shoot. You're watching Modern Shooter. At the Line is brought to you by Colt. Let's talk natural point of aim. The natural point of aim is the most comfortable position to shoot. It allows you to consistently place accurate shots in the center of your target. To determine your natural point of aim, it's a very simple drill to do. You take your firearm in a ready position, close your eyes, and punch out as if you're aiming at a target. When you open up your eyes, your handgun should be aligned with the center of the target. If the lens on the camera was my target, you can see my natural point of aim is off center. There's simple adjustments that we can do in our stance to correct this. Daryl's gonna help me demonstrate the natural point of aim. So Daryl, if you could, get to the ready position. What I want you to do is close your eyes, push the gun out to the target, and open your eyes. Is your gun in perfect alignment with the center of the target? A little bit to the left. So what we want to do is make simple adjustments. So we always just move the strong side leg. If your gun is pointing to the left side of the target, what Daryl's going to do is move his right foot slightly to the rear until he's aligned. Now what he's going to do is bring the gun back to the ready position, close his eyes, push the gun out to the target again, open your eyes, and the target should be aligned. If he was pushing to the right of the target, we would move his strong side leg forward. It would bring the gun towards the left. You can do this at home, dry fire, and you can consistently step into your natural point of aim. If Daryl's going to holster up right now, take a few steps back, when Daryl comes up and draws, his gun will be in the center of the target. He will have his natural point of aim. So Daryl, if you could come up, stop, draw, punch out, natural point of aim. Holster, Daryl. Knowing your natural point of aim is one of the most critical aspects of our shooting. It allows us to consistently place our shots in the center of our target. Okay, the next thing is your bullets. Okay, we've, we've decided we're gonna go with 375. Now you need to consider what bullets you're gonna shoot. Um, for dangerous game, especially for Cape Buffalo, 
what most hunters do is they have uh, the, the bullet in, the cartridge in the barrel is usually some kind of a expandable um, bullet, a very durable bullet, something that's going to get you penetration, but it's going to give you good expansion because your first shot is going to be very controlled. You're going to be in a controlled situation where you're going to be able to try to go for that lung, you know, that double lung heart shot. So you're going to have time to make good placement. Now, if something goes horribly wrong, you want to have three bullets that are going to back you up. And in this case, you're going to use solid points. And the reason for that is if you've got a charging animal or even an animal that's running away at this point, you want to be able to break them down as, as, as well as you can, and that means penetration. The Maroi Conservancy, like all conservancies, is uh, basically a cooperation between landowners. They're pooling all their land together into this great big hunting operation. So what you have is an enormous piece of land with lots and lots of animals and no interior fences. Uh, I got my Cape Buffalo the second morning of the hunt. Ken was with me, we got to share the experience. Now Ken's up to bat. We had seen on Gory's hunt um, um, buffalo from, from the elevated position on the copy. So I decided once again, let, let's go back up there. It was a beautiful day. Terry Bonar, our tracker, actually spotted some buffaloes off in the distance. Terry Bonar saw seven bulls moving from, from the eastern to the western side, of which there were three, three good bulls in it. We sat there for about half an hour and decided um, we sent another tracker, and he found that they've They've, their tracks have crossed the road. And I just got this hunch that they, they were going towards the water. As we've had a lot of rain and there's still some water in the river. Well, I came out this morning looking for buffalo and I climbed up on uh, one of the copies here. Um, kind of open area in front of us. We'd heard there was some uh, buffalo moving, uh, would be hopefully right across in front of us here. And we waited a while, thought maybe they'd uh, settled in the bush a little bit. So one of the trackers went down and kind of worked his way through there. And, um, looked like they'd moved on. We're gonna climb down off of here. We're gonna head over. They think there's a watering hole that they're headed towards and we're gonna try and get over there and uh, probably kind of be set up right in that area and hopefully they'll walk in on us. We dropped down off the kopi, got into the bush and tried to cut the buffalo off. Um, we're cruising along through the bush and we drop into this sandy river bed, you know, a dry creek bed. And it was kind of almost surreal being down in there. We were surrounded by the bush, but we had pretty easy going, but we had no idea where the buffalo were. I mean, we were all looking around. We're trying to stay on the track. Actually, there was a couple times down that riverbed. I'm kind of looking up at the banks, a lot of cover, and I'm going, I wonder who's stalking who here. Uh, but the buffalo, they kept zigzagging in and out of that creek bed. So we'd be on the track, they'd be zigging out, We'd stay and they'd zig back in. So we just kept trying to plow along, either get ahead of them or try to catch up to them. We ended up at a water hole and Ben's looking over the situation. We're not sure if we got there ahead of the buffaloes or if they're already gone, but Ben decided the best course at that point was just to sit down and maybe spend an hour or two there. I mean, we're at the water hole, the day is heating up. We're thinking this is where the buffalo are gonna wanna be. It's maybe one, two minutes later, we're standing there trying to decide what to do. We look up and there's a buffalo just walks into the clearing about 100 yards out. We're just dumbfounded by it. I think everybody just kind of stood around for about five seconds and then everybody just scrambled into position. Uh, ben slammed down the standing shooting sticks. Ken got on the sticks, camera guys got ready and there we are. What makes a legacy? Is it quality? Craftsmanship? Maybe it's the idea that every American deserves their right to security and peace of mind on and off the battlefield. What makes a legacy? Here at Colt, we're making it every day. Colt, built one at a time, proven every round.
I don't know if everybody realizes what a magical place Africa is. And it's not just that it's such a game rich environment. It's really hunting at its most primal roots. I think every hunter owes it to himself to experience Africa. Well, people ask me about going to Africa, because I've been here 10 times in various countries and such. And um, You know, what's the attraction? And there's no simple answer, but there's so many things that attract you about coming to Africa. One is, it's just exotic. It's away from our hustle bustle, our everyday life. It takes you places that most people never get to go. You see life that none of us you know, ever experience at home. And in the end, you have this great wealth of memories of a special place. Across the river there, we got up the hillside, probably 100 yards or so up to a place, and it was a nice open area, and everybody's kind of looked around to get comfortable, because Ben had said, well, we'll spend an hour. It's maybe one, two minutes later, we're standing there trying to decide what to do. We look up, and there's a buffalo just walks into the clearing. Uh, ben slammed down the standing shooting sticks. Ken got on the sticks. Camera guys got ready. I don't think he knew we were there, but he was facing us. And I'm like, okay, I'm ready. I'm getting up on the sticks. I'm getting ready. And then another one walks out, and he's bigger. You can tell immediately he's a much bigger animal. In fact, when he walked by the other buffalo, it was almost this like, you know, out of my way little guy, and he walks over and stops. Left, yeah. So, you know, I get on him and I'm ready to go, and uh, Ben said, I'm gonna make the call, let's do it. Which way? Okay, ready. Water shot. Water shot. Going down. Down. After that second shot, I, uh, I I dipped my or I had a little blood on my nose and I went like that. And was, I'm not sure why I did it. I don't even remember doing that. But I kind of crowded that scope a little bit on the second shot and it bit me. I got a little. Uh, I guess out here they're calling it the bush tattoo. I got a bush tattoo out of the deal. <laughs> Hunting Cape Buffalo is serious business. So we're going down the hill here now, we're crossing the river, we know he ran off to the left somewhere. There's quite a bit of bush over there. Uh, and it's, I mean, this is, you know, you, guns up, you're ready, because you don't know what's gonna happen next. I'm kind of following Ben's lead, being there to, you know, we'll see what happens. We get back in there a little ways, and uh, Ben found him, he says, there he is, he was still, he was actually, he was actually sitting down, but he was sitting upright. And Ben says, you know, put another shot into him. I did, at that point he rolled over, Ben says, put another shot into him underneath which I did, and then at that point we felt we were you know, pretty secure in the whole thing, but we made a big loop around him, came in from the backside like you always want to do, you want to come up on the backside. You can't be, you just can't be too careful when you're hunting something like a Cape Buffalo. <laughs> thank you. There you go. Ah, thank well you. Ah, thank you very much. Yeah. First of all, what struck me is this is a different kind of buffalo. I mean, it, it's it's a cape buffalo, but I've never seen a set of horns like this before. And we walk up and get real close, walk around the front and look at them. I'm like, wow, this is great. This is really, it's a unique animal from my perspective. I've shot a buffalo before, but nothing like this. You look at all the markings here, brilliant. This yeah. is a, the bark of trees that they okay. that they fight with uh, to, to, to get dominance in the herd. It was a beautiful bull had a really nice wide sweep to the horns. I mean, I could just see how excited he was. And for me, it was just really enjoyable to be there to share that with him. That was a great experience. <laughs>